Extreme Trends presents, In 1971, a teen fell 10,000 feet from an airplane and was presumed deceased. But that wasn't the end. Before we begin, do us a favor and click that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to be inspired by these heartwarming stories every day. A lot of people board planes to travel. It has become a primary method of transportation, especially for extremely far places. Technology has brought people to an era where places hundreds and thousands of miles apart can be reached within a matter of hours. Of course, it would be inevitable for risks to happen, even when safety measures are reinforced. There have been instances of airplanes crashing due to all sorts of factors, and as a result, some people get scared of being on an airplane. Fear of flying or aviophobia is a relatively common phobia. It's not really the flying part that can give the sensation of fear, but the idea of a malfunction or whatever which could potentially cause the plane to go down and eventually take the lives of its passengers. The fact is that flying is the safest way to travel. According to reports, there have been fewer incidents of accidents on airplanes compared to other means of transportation. It's true. But still, people lost their loved ones because of an airplane accident, and they wouldn't feel any different than those who have lost someone from a car crash or whatnot. With that being said, it would be truly unlucky to be part of such a tragic ordeal. Julianne Kuepke was an example. It was Christmas Eve of 1971, and everyone was eager to get home. Julianne and her mother even had to stay longer because the plane was seven hours late. Granted, the seven-hour wait in a bustling pre-Christmas Hanukkah and other winter holiday airport for a trip that itself usually only takes an hour in the air was definitely frustrating to some, at least before the flight took off. For Julianne and her ornithologist mother, Maria Kuepke, that frustration gave way to relief as they began boarding at 11 a.m. the morning of December 24, 1971, and they got themselves ready for their journey home. The flight would take the pair directly over the most remote parts of the Peruvian rainforest, an unforgiving region known for its extreme environments and dangerous animals. There, Julianne would be reunited with her father, world-renowned zoologist, ornithologist, and herpetologist Hans Wilhelm Kuepke, for the Christmas break on the family's nature reserve. The trip was going to be the bookend to an eventful day for Julianne that saw her attending her high school graduation ceremony only hours earlier with her proud mother in the audience. Both of the Kuepke elders were stationed at a research outpost in the depths of the Amazon jungle, several hundred miles away from Julianne's school. Julianne spent part of her childhood with her parents surrounded by the wild dangers of the jungle, including several kinds of poisonous snakes, scorpions, jaguars, and biting ants on the land, plus electric eels and piranhas in the water. It was a training that would help the teenager during her Amazonian trial by fire. Approximately 40 minutes after the takeoff of Flight 508, the plane encountered a pitch-black sky, hiding a massive thunderstorm. Constant cannon-like thunders quickly enveloped the plane and flashes of lightning briefly illuminated the worried faces of the people seeking out the rain-pelted windows. Despite it being early afternoon, the dense clouds blocking out all signs of the sun made it seem as if the Kuepke's flight was in the air at midnight. One of those peeking faces belonged to Julianne, who, loving the distraction of looking outside whenever she flew, had claimed window seat 19F next to her mother in the second to last row of the plane. As Flight 508 continued into the heart of the storm, the plane began to shake violently. The atmosphere inside the cabin became different with a dangerous mix of partially full drinking glasses, Christmas presents, and luggage pelting frightened passengers. It would be safe to say that at this point, some of the cabin's occupants were realizing their lives were possibly becoming at risk. As she looked out her window and across the plane's right wing, Julianne saw a brilliant wave of white light. What she did not know was that she was witnessing a fuel tank being hit by lightning, and the resulting explosion ripped the wing of the plane completely off. The plane nosedived. Beyond the screams of terrified passengers, the majority of whom would no longer be alive within moments, and the thundering roar of the plane rocketing towards the jungle below, Julianne heard the final words her mother would ever say to her. There was a fear in Maria Kowepke's voice. Julianne did not know what to think or do, she just accepted the fact that they were about to possibly die. Suddenly, the noise stopped and she was outside of the plane. Julianne was in a free fall, strapped to her seat bench, and hanging head over heels. The whispering of the wind was the only noise she could hear. She thought it was a pretty sad way to leave the world. The remains of Flight 508 were now scattered over 5.8 square miles of the Amazon, and the largest rescue operation by air and land in Peruvian history happened. The jungle was full of large trees, and dense overhead canopies made it even harder for the patrols to locate the wreckage of the plane. 
After a few days, they have finally reached the area inside the jungle where most of the plane debris was scattered. The rescuers were shocked by what they saw. They didn't even believe it the first time they saw it. There she was, Julianne Kuepi still strapped in her seat. Miraculously, she was still alive and breathing despite the horrifying crash. Her fall through the thick overhead canopy had left her with a severe concussion and a broken collarbone, a scrape on one arm and a deep gash on her leg. She was sent to a hospital in Pucallpa, Peru, where she was treated for her injuries. After a few days, Julianne, the lone survivor of Lance of Flight 508, was reunited with her father. Sadly, Julianne's mother died from the injuries of her fall. Her body was found days after Julianne arrived back home. The whole ordeal of her survival fueled the demand for Julianne's attention, a pressure that was beginning to take its toll on the young girl. As Julianne struggled to find balance in a life where her mother was horrifically taken from her, she was also dealing with reporters who were going so far as to masquerade as nurses so that they could talk with her. At that time, she only wanted some peace to mourn the passing of her mother. Julianne carries on her mother's legacy today as a biologist back in her native Germany. Her experience remains one of the most miraculous survival stories of all time. Thank you for watching until the end. Subscribe to our channel for more unbelievable stories and check out one of the two videos on your screen for another incredible story right here on Extreme Trends.